Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. <clears throat> I'm Stacy, and today we are going to use my brand new Mungio Aquarelle um, oil pastels. These are extra soft and water soluble. I bought them, I believe, through Jerry's Artorama. I, I love Jerry's. Um, they're really good pricing, and these are very inexpensive. If you want to start out with a water-soluble oil pastel, this is the way to go. I got two packs of whites because they were like a buck something a piece, <clears throat> buck fifty or something like that. Um, these are the. Let's just rip that off. Apparently, it's getting all aggressive. Um, nice big, chunky. Um, extra soft says right on the side let's see if I can get it to focus without, I changed my lights around so I've got weirdness happening with the lighting there we go I think that works <clears throat> so I have two boxes of those I set that one aside sorry if that was loud I also got the um, pearl colors which look like this and <clears throat> oh, these are the color names. I'm not going to be able to get super close because of my lighting. Um, and these are supposed to be like iridescent and pearly, like pearlescent. When you use them, we'll see. It's a nice arrangement of colors. And then I got the set of 24 regular colors. Um, both of these sets are water soluble. And these are the colors that you get in the um, regular set. Now I'm going to put the lids so that I don't mess things up. I'm going to put the lids underneath. Like so. Now the color ranges are pretty similar. Now that I'm glancing through. You're just getting pearlescent and non-pearlescent colors. I don't really see a difference in the selections. Like these look a little more oily though, for sure. Well, maybe not. And the wrapping's just super shiny. Yeah, this is ochre. And this one is ochre. So we have ochre and ochre. The pearlescent one is a, looks a little lighter, a little more shiny. So we'll play with them. We'll see how they do. And then I got extra whites because you tend to go through a lot of whites when you're blending and whatnot. We'll see how fast we go through. Scooch in there. We'll play with that later. These two whites before we get carried away with getting in those ones. Let's see, I'm going to set these off to the side. I have out, well, these are my pencils, my pencil, my mechanical pencil and my little eraser that I used for erasing. And I got out these two brushes to use my Princeton Velvet Touch round number 10 and then my Zen Art Faux Squirrel round number 10. Just this one. I mean, there's an obvious size difference, so there's no real rhyme or reason to brush sizes. I just wanted one a little bigger and one a little smaller for blending purposes. And I drew out this cute little duck peeking at us because I thought it would be a really nice, um, simple design to use for my very first ever water soluble um, oil medium situation. Right, so we have all that going for us. Got our lights on. Things look all right. I'm gonna ooh, tilt this one this way. I don't know. I'm all over the map about the lighting. It's bugging me. It's bugging me, you guys. Maybe if I pull this one forward, then it puts it in frame, which I don't want. I'm trying to, there we go, that's a little better, <clears throat> simplify my, my setup so that I 
when I'm at my daughter's, I'm not taking over the world, you know? I don't want to take over her whole house with my setup. All right. Let's start with his, her, his, her. I think it's a female duck. It might be, it might be a male. I don't know. Sometimes the coloring throws me off on. I know the more colorful ones are male, but I'm going to start with purple. This one, the pearlescent one, because I think it's pretty. And we're going to put in some just gentle, you know what we can do before we get too carried away with putting in color. We can put in a little background and uh, see how they blend. I've literally never used these. I haven't swatched them. I don't know how they're going to do. So maybe we'll do that real quick. Let's put in a little... Hmm, these are going to be purples and blacks. Maybe we could do a little little soft, we could do yellows, a little soft yellow green background, let's, mm, maybe not, I don't know what to do, the limited so color selections, throwing me off, alright, let's start with this, where are you, olive color, and we'll go ahead and put in a light layer, and I'm gonna, we'll start light, and see, this is, I'm using watercolor paper. This is Artist Loft, 140 pound, um, just cold pressed watercolor paper. Nothing super fancy. I get it at Michael's Art uh, Craft Store. Um, for, I want to say this particular pad, because I got the bigger pad, was like $12 for 30 sheets. It's crazy and expensive. I also had coupons, so. I ended up spending like four dollars but I got two pads so so there's that for you all right so we've got a little bit of this down let's set that there maybe I should grab a tissue so it don't roll around there we go set that guy there and then maybe a little bit of pearlescent like this this one right here this Ooh, cobalt green. Ooh, getting bold. Getting bold. And see, we'll put them next to each other over here in this corner. And we'll blend with water. I'm going to use my, my Zen art brush. A little bit of water. I have a towel out just for blotting purposes in case we need to blot. My, my grubby looking towel. It's clean. It's just stained from use. Okay, a little bit of water, make sure there's no droplets on my ferrule, and go in easy, ooh, oh my goodness, that blends nice, so super vibrant colors, that blends really nice, and it is slightly sparkly, which is nice. Get a little more water. Go into our light color and blend that into our like that. Now it did settle into the groove of the paper pretty well. Maybe a heavier application. And you don't have to use watercolor paper for this. I just figured it would be a good option. You could probably use a smoother mixed media paper. And uh, it wouldn't get in the groove so deeply, maybe. Maybe, maybe. I'll move my footstool back a little bit. There we go. All right. Do we like that dark green up there? I feel like we should mute that out a little bit. Maybe with some... 
Well, I don't really want to use blues. Maybe we'll mute it out with some... Oh, we could use some of this shiny ochre. Like that. Right on the wet. Ooh, it's very smooth on that wet. Just gently kind of pushing the pigment around. Okay. Kind of spreads out, makes a nice tint. I like that yellow green tint that it's creating. Kind of a watercolor effect, which is totally up my alley. A soft little glow behind his head. Instead of going heavy with the pigment, we could go light. With our green gold. Can we do that? Not really, not effectively. I really like, I kind of don't care for that. Let's blend that out a little bit. Mm. Joy of um, oil pastel is that you can go over the top of it with other oil pastels. Okay, so a little bit of water is better than a lot of water. Gives it a little bit of a glow. Okay, maybe maybe a softer green on top. See how that mixes. Kind of just a damp brush. Do we like that? That's kind of nice. Dab, dab, dab. Just a damp brush, I think, is the way to go. Got it super wet up here, which I think might have been a mistake. That's all right. Live and learn. Dab, dab, dab. It's very vibrant. Super vibrant. Okay, let's get a little bit of... Oh yeah, okay. So I could do a vibrant, vibrant background like I like and then soften it. Like mute it out with that white on top. Good idea. Look at me go. <laughs> Alright, I like this color. This green gold color. What, what are you again? Ochre? Or olive. This olive is really pretty. And that was in... How do I tell the difference? Does this say pearlescent on it? Ooh, Prussian blue. Would be this one, right? Oh, this has a gold band on the bottom, and the writing is different. This is black label, and this is not. All right, cool. So now I know. This is a non-iridescent color. Okay, let's go ahead and finish putting in a little bit of a background all the way around our duck. I'm feeling my duck's gonna be pretty vibrant. I wonder, I wonder, let's put in some of this blue on that yellow, what blue are you? Just light blue, and give it a little blend. Hmm. 
I'm gonna have to play around with the blending of colors. That's not bad though. That made almost this exact green. Alright. What are you? I was shooting for maybe a little bit of a sky peeking through, but I don't think that's gonna be an option. Not wet on wet anyways. Plus I'm starting to roll up that paper. Alright, so we're gonna just gently into the night here. That's something to keep in mind too, the resist the resilience of the paper you're using. I'm using a pretty inexpensive watercolor paper, so it's not really gonna take a lot of crazy action, you know. Maybe we'll go, we'll go to green, this green um, down here, and then iridescent blue-green down here. See how that goes? Gradient kind of thing. Just fill this in. Look that kind of naked over there. Naked as the day I was born. There we go. A little bit of water. Come up here. Yep, right up into the, we're close to that beak. Nice and close. A little more water. Maybe watercolor was not the way to go. The watercolor paper. Create a little upwards blend. Upward mobility. It was very relaxing, if nothing else. I'm having a very relaxing a afternoon painting session. And when I saw the water, so ooh, water soluble oil pastels. What? I was intrigued. I have water soluble. Um, I need a little more water on this one. I do have water soluble oil paints, but I'm not going to get into those until after my move because I'm going to be moving in the heat of summer and oil paints will definitely um, melt in the car. Like I don't want to do a really nice oil paint piece and then have it melt in the car on the way across the country. <laughs> that would be a That'd be so sad. I'm not really digging this blend. Maybe a little more water. Maybe we'll fuss with that. After we get his coloring in, I'm, I think I'm just gonna go like like I don't know. Um, all right, so I got a weird <laughs> yellow to green thing going on so he's apparently some sort of angel some sort of angel going on over here maybe we will what should we do I'm thinking <coughs> thinking I'm not really digging that is very shiny though super shiny I'm not digging this at all. Maybe we'll let it dry and come back to the, the outside because I'm not digging it at all. But maybe in here I can take that purple 
and kind of dab it in. And get a little glaze of pearless and purple on those cheeks. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> mm. What's this? Is this black? This is... Yes. So I have black and I have pearlescent black. Yeah, interesting. I need a piece of paper. Oh, I don't want to ruin this whole... Oh, here we go. <coughs> this is exactly this paper. So we can experiment a little bit. This is the, the regular black. And that's the pearl black. Ooh, that's very gray, though. So I don't want to do that. We do want to do this. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and first... First... We're going to go ahead and get in this eye. Well, we still have a point on our black. I'm just going to touch the paper, touch and pick up like that. Okay. <clears throat> and then we can get in our little, little flex. I'm going to leave the white of the paper there. Just kind of sparkly flex around the eye. Then we have we have our black here. Now if we do the black, right here's where experimenting comes in. We'll do the black. Nice and thick where it needs to be nice and dark. It's crumbling a bit. On that back edge, into the eye area, right back there, it's nice and dark. Kind of goes up, 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 like that. Okay. Very little water and gently. Well, that might be the way. Gently fill in the gaps a little bit where it's supposed to be like super dark. Like that. And then get some textures in. Nice. I dig that. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So we could put in our light colors and go over with our darks. I dig that. Okay, so keeping that in mind. I'm going to leave this piece alone for right now, except for around the eye. Okay, there's our eye. Done. There's kind of a lot of pigment on here. I'm going to go ahead and get in the 
his nostrils. Maybe a little bit of Pretty dark right there. Okay. Clean our brush. Yeah, it cleans off nice. Cool. Alright, so knowing that, let's go in with our let's go in with our our pretty colors, right? We want purples. Like that. And I want a little bit of iridescent blue as well. Here. Like that. Touch up here. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Okay. I know it looks so. <laughs> super crazy right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, a little bit of water. Almost got too much. And I'm just going to gently blend it into the page softly. Like that. This is going to be so cool when it's done. Hopefully, hopefully it'll turn out the way I'm thinking it will. Right? That blue purple there. bit of shine that's back there. Pick up some from down here. Come up here. Drop that in. Get his head shape in with our blues. Like that. It's very sparkly to me too, which is perfect. I do want a little more purple in there though. Maybe when we get the... Is there a little... Nope. This is the lightest purple. Good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Feels kind of like carving out the piece, but with paint. That makes sense? I'm wetting the brush and then drying off all the excess so that it's damp but not wet. I'm giving it a soft blend. Just a soft push. No, 
don't want the purple and blue to blend together too much. But I definitely want them to both be prominent. Like flickers. In the under, it's basically underpainting, right? Get this little fuzzy. Fuzzy little cheeks in. Like that. And then just pull that up right there. Grab some blue from down here, put it right there. This is fun, okay. Experimentation, I got a little globule of purple right here, <laughs> trying to push into the page, keeps running away. Get in there. It doesn't want to, we'll just let it be. Maybe it'll... Maybe it just isn't meant to be. A little tuft of fur back there. Poking out. And then maybe a glaze of this. Iridescence. Through here? Why not? Let's wet our brush, dry it off, and just kind of drag that color over to the edge. Like that. Okay. There's the base color of his head. Let's get the base color of his chest in as well with this. I think I want to use this. This is another pearl color. Which we're going to go ahead. And this is a white band right in here. I don't want to fill that in right yet. This one is the raw sienna. We could put in a little bit of the ochre and then do we have a we have we have a brown we're gonna use a, a little bit of this brown dark brown but let's blend these together first let's kind of in the direction that the feathers go because they're little short short feathers through here just kind of dabbing, dabbing in a downward kind of, a dab and then a gentle pull down when I pick up to kind of pull the color a little bit. Does that make sense? It smashes it in a little bit and pulls it up, pulls it down at the same time. And the tip of the brush is making nice little inroads into the white up there, which is perfect. Maybe a touch more water. Dry that off. Keep going. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. And that creates a nice base color for our feathers down here. Should we let this dry, do you think? Is it dry? Nope. This is dry up here, though, already. Oh, that's good. Nice, nice. Right? Yeah, except that pearlescent stuff is coming off on my hands. Okay, do we need to wait, wait for it to dry? Should we? Probably. Are we going to? Heck no. 
rules are meant to be broken. I'm going to go ahead and get in some cool textures on that wet paper. Get some little bits of dark feathers. Yeah, he's cute. And the reference photo stops like right there, so I'm totally guessing at this part right here. Doing what I want. Why? Because it's art and I can. And I'm just making it look kind of like Layered feathers. Oh, you've seen ducks. Come on. Donald, Daffy. <laughs> Anybody? Oh yeah, this is this is nice. This is fun. I like oil pastels to begin with, so anywhere where there's chunks, I'm just gonna kind of press it into the page. That's probably not a bad idea. Just give it a little dab, dab, dab. It's a little sticky, but I mean it is oil pastels, it's probably meant to be, right? A little sticky. How's that? Yeah? Okay. Now, oops, where's that blue? What would that, like, dark blue? This is a dark one, right? Russian. Get a little, a little bit of shadow stuff going on. Yeah, I take that. You don't have to dab it into the page. I like a nice thick application of of oil pastels. Generally, I work with very dense colors. I like it to cover the texture of the paper. It doesn't I don't really yeah I need all the texture of the paper to show. There's a little bit of darkness right here in those fingers. There we go. All right. All right, I'm going to set that down, and now, I feel like before we get carried away with the deep blacks, I should put in the beak so that I do, I'm not blending the black into the beak too much. What do you guys think? Let's put this little duck bill in. It's a duck bill, not a beak. It's kind of a yellow green color, so maybe we'll start with a nice bright yellow. We'll start in with a nice bright yellow. I'm gonna leave the the white spots a little white. There. I don't want to lose the shape of his duck bill. That would be a bummer. All right, let's maybe a little ochre. This is the shiny one.
there. Take our brush. Kind of blend them together. Make it look a little dirty. I don't know if I want to put green in it. Do I want to? I don't think so. I don't think so. Round area right there. Let's just go ahead and get our our soft yellow locked into the page. Nice. Okay. Those chunks of oak are blended in a little bit. Okay. And maybe, maybe this olive color. And maybe not on the wet. For like the shadowy bits. Oh, I might have to wait for it to dry. Okay. Noted. Alright, we'll wait for the beak to dry. And I guess we could start in with our chunk right there. Pick that up. Pick that up. Okay. Let's get in here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do I want to blend out that background first? I don't know. I don't know. Um, kind of a little. What I really want to do is cover up that green that's right there. I'm not digging. Push it around a little bit. Not really looking to blend, I'm looking to cover. So I'm trying kind of medium water so there's some movement. that right here right now Kind of water heavy right here. Because I am looking for that to blend pretty well into the page. That, yeah, there we go. That's a little better. Another little layer. Touch of the, just a touch of that green. Push. 
Yeah, that's a better blend. I like that better. Nice. Nice, nice. Okay. Gently. I'm not trying to rub on that paper too hard because it was pilling up here. Just right up next to him. I got picked up a little bit of black right there. That's all right. I'll just push it back in. There we go. Drop some water. And give it a blend. Okay. So you can layer it then. You can create some nice gradients if you're patient. And layer it like this. Note it. Of course, if that means the piece is taking a lot longer than I meant for it to. That's all right. But that created a really nice gradient in the background now. I like that. Okay. Let's, let's finish that out to the edge over here and underneath that beak. There. We'll grab our green. Put that in here. Just be patient and blend softly. Just gently. It is pilling that paper a little bit over here. But I think that's because I scrubbed so hard before. But I already damaged the paper over here on this side. So, note to self, be gentle. Be gentle. Let's put the screen down here. touch of the dark down here, like that. And then let's go back up here, get in our softer, 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 more muted. There we go. There we go. That's better. Like that. And then little soft, gentle circles on the paper. Gentle, gentle. I'm hardly pushing on this brush at this point. Just kind of, just enough pressure to touch the surface of the page and swirl it around with the water. Kind of blending it on the surface of the page instead of trying to push it into the page which is a better technique. Where does he go? That's what, that's what we're doing right here. We're learning as we go. <laughs> uh, get that iridescent blue blended in. This is where I damaged the paper before. Where I was scrubbing really hard in the beginning instead of letting it blend in, do what it needs to do. Just be gentle, gentle, gentle. Create a nice little gradient. A little dark down here but that's all right we can come in and fix it later if we need if we feel the need at the end this weird spot right here we might be able to put another layer and fix it and this corner up here I'm waiting for that to dry a little more 
I think I'm gonna put some some white and some of this let's let's grab some white right now. This is my thought. We could put some white up here in this corner. Like that. Maybe right there on that weird spot right there. Maybe do we want the green in there as well? Let's see what the white does when we push it around on the page. Because I have that ochre up here as well, which I forgot about till just now. This corner is going to take much more of a beating. Might have to just leave it alone. That's all right. I mean, this is my first piece doing this, so I am learning as I go here for reals. Right before your very eyes, you guys. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna leave that corner alone for now. Cause it wasn't quite dry when I did all that. And kinda let it, just let it be. I might go in with a dry application once that's dry and smudge it out with my finger, traditional way. All right, let's finish up our duck. Let's finish up our duck, dude. He is, um, we have the black to put on, and I'm actually very excited about that. This is the black. I really want to go in with the Prussian. I did it down here. Maybe we'll put a little bit right here and see what it does. Kind of give him a little blue-black feel that right there and we have the black here which goes all along this outer edge back here all the way up into that cheek to about here it starts getting sparkly and sprinkly right about there a little fluffy and cute Oh, that looks so pretty. And I think he might pop off the page when we're done. It's going to be great. A little bit of there. Through here. Like that. And take our Prussian, which has brown on it. Again, do I like that? I don't know. I feel like that might take away some of the drama of that black over the um, It's very painterly. I like it. Just give it a little, little dots there. Okay. Do 
just glazing that brush over the top like that just barely touching that surface how intense is that that's a great dig it get this one blended this little little bit here we our little teensy bits of black over our iridescent colors like that okay and then a little bit more of a point gently top of where that dark dark is and just let it be nice and dark like that and then we can start pulling it over the iridescent colors gently softly That noise you hear is my pinky rubbing on the paper so that I don't use too heavy of a hand through here. Get our, just gently dragging from the dark into our iridescent area. Being mindful of the direction of the feathers, not covering the whole area. You do want it to shine, right? Okay. Whew. I want to put the, this dark in over here. Which goes all the way down. It's very dramatic. dark there. Looks terrible before you wet it, doesn't it? <laughs> I will say this, it does m make it a little more matte. Just, I can't remember if my oil pastels are matte or not. They probably are. If you want it to shine though, you could spray a fixative over the top. A nice like oil pastel fixative of some sort if you really wanted to. Here. Not worrying too much about my. I don't want to get super close to my beak because I don't want it to. I don't want to fudge it up. So I'm going to wait till I get in there with the water and the brush to perfect that edge. And then. Kind of up and around. There's a little dot here up and around and there's some here and there's little I'll let the texture of the paper do the job right here Here. This whole 
edge right here is super dark. Right through there. We have a little bit of a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Through there. Just a little bit there. Alright, let's use the brush and see what happens. Oh, I mean, it looks terrible right now, right? Let's start up here. It has basic shape now. I don't get too carried away. Soften the edge right here. And then pull it in and up. In and up. Pretty dark there. And then we have some dark through here. Oops, that nostril. effective. That's not creating the effect that I want. There we go. It's a little better. How's he looking? Weird? Agreed. You look a little weird, buddy. Don't judge me. Just a bit there. I mean, it looks more like part of him instead of just a weird section of fur. How's that? Like that, and then we need this to kind of go around. It needs to go around those markings. Let me do. a little bit into there, but not, I don't want all my purples to go away, so I'm just going to tap, like we did down here, do a little tappy tap. that it blends without obliterating all of that underpainting. I 
How's it looking? little curvy blend of that cheek area. I am doing little roundy shapes. Little like half moon, half those crescent. That's the word I was looking for, little crescent shapes. Like that. To add that little bit of dark spot in. Dampen this and drag it in. Let's get our edge on our beak right here. Gently, gently. Gently, gently, gently. There we go. And done. Cool. There. I don't know why this keeps doing that. It's been bugging me. Because it is going to show markings on the page, right? So, still got to be mindful of what what marks you're making, so that your animal looks like an animal. I'm not an animal. Trust me, you are an animal. There, okay, a little more water. I dip it in and then kind of tamp off the excess on the t on the towel over here. You don't want it too wet because it makes it too thin, right? There's a little chunk right there. I'm trying to blend that in a little bit. Get our little. Now the edge isn't clean on him. He's got little ruffly feathers kind of poking out and laying down and fuzzy parts. So don't worry about getting it super perfect with a furry animal. Birds have weird feathers that poke out. Not every bird's picture perfect. I actually prefer to draw birds that are not picture perfect. They look a little rough around the edges. <laughs> They look, they look like oil. <laughs> that was an adventure. It's just more fun. There's, It's more interesting. There's more personality. I feel like. Okay. Like that. I'm just going to glaze that part. Leave it a little glowy right there. And then... Go ahead and get in some little little markings, little squigglies. Drag the start down here. Get a couple. It's not like perfectly iridescent and shiny, right? Do that. Little glaze. Like that. Do we want to do that or do we want to just glaze it completely like a nice little like that? Both? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. 
I forgot about this side. Just have pure color and a bunch of chunks. We do have a smooth spot right in here somewhere. I'll give him one little smooth spot on that neck. There we go. Okay. I think so. A little bit more dark right here. A little more. A few more little directional feather markings like so. Around that eye, like so, like that. Um, little crescent dudes right through there, going up, 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 up. I will tell you this much, this is fun. This is a lot of fun. Okay. Maybe pull this edge up just a skosh. Just a skosh. Like that. Pull this up just a bit. I feel like I need a little more dark right here. Just a little, like right here. And just a skosh right here. Okay. That, okay. Maybe, maybe a little bit here. Right there. A little more right here. Touch more right here. Alright, what else? What else? We're almost there. I need to do this band of white and finish up the touches on the beak. See hairs over here running up into that beak. Okay, and then we've got some shadows. Nice. Just stealing from over here. Just a little. Just a little bit of black residue on the page that I'm using to finish up the beak. Because 
this part's not true black, it's kind of a gray yellow black. If that makes sense. Snag some from there. Get our little bit of shadow in over here. Pull it around. Pull it around. Round little half moon marks to make it feel like it has some shape. Right? That. Dig it? Okay. Get the rest of this in. This little bit of... I don't know what that noise is. I think someone's vacuuming in the hallway. Can you hear that? Probably not. It's one of those weird peripheral noises that bugs the crap out of me. But no one else hears it. <laughs> and no, I'm not crazy. <laughs> looking pretty good. Am I feeling it? I feel maybe just, um, I might regret this, but I'm going to do it anyways. Just a little teensy bit of black on that lower bit of beak somewhere. Touch there, and touch there. Just a bit. Yeah, there we go. I wasn't feeling, um, what do you call it? Not powerful, um, like enough contrast. Was it contrasty? Technical terminology. Just push it in and pull it around a little bit. That's a little better. Good. How's it? I dig that. Okay. Now I'm going to grab the iridescent white because it's fun. And we're going to go ahead and put it in here. We'll scribble it in the center. It's a little crumbly. I'm not digging that. But that's okay. it in. Okay. And then you can get a few, you know, maybe we should do it with the brush. Clean off that black really good. That black gone? I think so. Yeah. And then get a little bit of water and maybe, oh, maybe not. That's okay. I was thinking we could kind of push it up into the black a little bit, but that's not going to happen. So maybe a little bit. Make it that little fuzzy, imperfect feel on the edges, like that. So it's not pure white, it's got some reflective stuff going on, which is what I was looking for. And then, maybe, let's see, we've got a bit of shine right here. Not there. Come on. Here. <laughs> Come on. Let's press it in. Yeah. That's too crumbly. Let's try the non iridescent one and see if that's better. 
just wanted to do a little bit of a little bit of blendy blend, you know? Yeah, that's better. Where it's shiny but not white. So you can pick up the color underneath, blend it in a bit, but it still looks like a shiny spot. We got a nice bright one right through here, so we'll just do that. A little bit of brightness right here, do that. There's a bit of brightness up here as well, so I'm just going to press in. This is a pretty heavy application up there, so do that. I'm going to press it so it's in there. Maybe give a little circular, little circular push into the page. And then let's see. I'm not going to fuss with the eye. I like how the eye looks. I think we're done. The only thing I don't really care for is this white space between the, his neck and the um the paper. The only way to fix that is to extend his neck, and I don't know if I want to do that. Do I want to do that? Get rid of that white before I do that. I guess that's not so bad. Kind of soften that cheek. Yeah, that's that's a little better. Okay. Let's take that. Alright. I think I think I'm gonna call it done. I'm gonna leave it alone. Cause we pretty well <laughs> I've damaged the paper. Um Let's take off our tape, Let's see what it looks like. I did get under the tape a little bit, that's a bummer. This isn't the stickiest tape either, it's dollar store masking tape, so probably could have used a better tape and a better paper. <laughs> Maybe mix media paper next on the next one. Maybe we'll do mixed media paper on the next one. And we'll use er, my stickier tape that I have for the for our edges. And then our bottom bottom edge, which is actually pretty crisp. And then I'm gonna see if I can tap off some of that debris. There we go. It's a little better. We got a little bit of debris there but that's okay and there's our piece our little ducky I like him I think he's cool um now that I'm looking at him especially turning the page I'm thinking this section needs to be a little less in a little less glowy so I'm gonna come up from here and just Gently pull from these areas. Is that too much? Might have been a little too much. A little obliterated a little more than I wanted to but that's okay that's all right see this is what happens when you know you should stop but you keep touching it all right I'm gonna stop touching it stop touching it all right take a little bit of tape 
tissue and maybe blot some of that water. There we go. Okay. Done. Done, done. Done and done. Here's some close-ups. Uh, I'm going to move this light up so that we get some decent light on him. Yeah, there's our... There he is. I really like that iridescent underneath the solid. That looks really pretty. Um, see right here, I've got the iridescence underneath the solid brown. And I think that makes a nice textures. What do you guys think? There's, a little, there's our little beak. And our pretty little eye. I did damage the paper a little bit. You can see where the paper is kind of worked up a bit but from a distance he looks cute right peeking at us like what <laughs> all right you guys let me know what you think in the comments below um do you like these do you have has anyone else used these this is my first time so but definitely felt challenged i'm not digging my background up here this down here is better than it was um the color combination could have been better as well. Um, but overall, I like it. Yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to feed our algorithm animal, you guys. He's hungry. Thumbs up. Comments. Subscribe if you're new. We'd love to have you back. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.